It is a sunny day, and flight IA-47 is on its way to London, with its pilot William, and co-pilot Daniel, reaching cruising altitude and updating the cabin filled with people, including two army men. The pilots settle in for the long journey when the electronics begin to malfunction. William radios in the small issue but the operator reports back that there are clear skies ahead. Out of nowhere, a thunderstorm appears in front of them, shaking the plane and causing the passengers to fasten their seatbelts. In front of them, a large portal appears with a blue glow, pulling the plane in. There is no way to avoid the strange portal so William decides to go straight through. There is a flash of light and the plane is back in clear skies, however, outside it is now nighttime. William is unsure, however he reports to the passengers that sometimes things like this happen when they pass over the Bermuda Triangle, which is obviously a lie. In the cabin, the passengers realize that they have no Wi-Fi or cell phone signal, while in the cockpit, all the electronics are down with only the radar operational. William tries radioing his tower however there is only static on the line, and Daniel notes that the radar was the only thing not upgraded on the airplane. In the cabin, Cameron, a stewardess, gives out snacks and speaks with two history professors Dale and Bennett, who are heading to London for a convention, and another old man who is taking notes of everything happening around him. William and Daniel decide to fly around in a loop to try and pick up anything on radar, but strangely nothing turns up, making William think they have been blown off course. Seeing that no one can hear them, William decides to descend below the clouds in order to pick up any radio signals or visual cues. He radios back to Cameron telling her to get everyone in their seats as they will be descending to get away from turbulence, making Cameron and the other stewards worry. She gets strapped in with another stewardess Meredith as the plane begins to descend. William clears the clouds and is shocked to see land below him, as they should be over the Pacific. The radar then begins to pick up small aircrafts and they look out to see large fires below them. The passengers all begin to panic as they see planes dropping bombs below them, and Dale and Bennett spot something strange outside. Suddenly, small aircrafts begin to close around them, causing William to ascend back into cloud cover. In the back, the passengers are panicking, thinking they are in Ukraine. Cameron tries to calm them down when one man, Michael, demands an answer, grabbing her arm. Meredith comes to her rescue, threatening to restrain him. The pilots are clear of danger for the moment, and William wants to duck below the clouds once more to try and pick out any landmarks, as they still don't know where they are. In the cabin, Dale and Bennett try to speak with Cameron. When that isn't successful, they barge in on the cockpit, yelling that the planes they saw are German fighter planes while the stewards try to get them out. The two note that those planes were not made after 1945 and confirm that the plane has no working instruments. William gives them a chance to talk and Dale tells them that they may have time traveled. Meanwhile, Michael overhears the entire conversation. The professors want to help, citing that they can help identify landmarks and that if they descend lower, they should be able to pick up Allied forces radio signals. William tells them to help, but from their seats, and asks Cameron to keep everyone calm though they are in the dark. Everyone returns to their seats, and Michael grabs Cameron once more, demanding to know what's happening, but she warns him not to touch her again. Dale and Bennett are trying to confirm what they just saw while Michael overhears their conversation. Daniel wants William to keep an eye out for any storms, starting to believe Dale and Cameron, thinking that it may be a way back. William is still skeptical and tells him to focus on the task ahead. William descends and tries hailing on the radio but still hears nothing, deciding to go lower. Michael then overhears Dale and Bennett talking about the German invasion of France in World War II, citing that in a few days Hitler would be in Paris. William has begun to pick up German radio chatter until he hears a voice responding to him in English, warning him to get off this frequency as it is only used for emergencies. William identifies himself as captain, and the operator introduces himself as Corporal Nigel Sheffield of the Allied Forces, and confirms that they are in the year 1940. He still thinks that this is a hoax though and again warns them to get off the frequency. Dale and Bennett figure out where they are and leave to inform the captain, and Michael begins going through their things, finding a book on Hitler. William begs Nigel to help him find out where they are, who turns out to be just a teen in a tiny shack. Dale and Bennett join in on the conversation, trying to give Nigel proof that they are indeed in an aircraft, and tells him that one of their ships should have sunk in the bombing they just passed. Nigel leaves his post to speak with his colonel, explaining the transmission he received. Michael is reading through the book and then gets the brilliant idea to inform the entire plane of what's happening. He tells the passengers that they have time traveled and they all laugh at him. He tells them that they are in the middle of World War II and they will most likely die, adding that they are over France, and Hitler is currently on the ground beneath them and they have one opportunity to kill him and change history. Cameron tries talking him out of it, but two other guys back him up, deciding to take control of the plane and land it. The two soldiers, Sergeant Turner and Private Jackson, intervene and warn Michael that what he is trying to do is called terrorism. A brawl breaks out and Cameron comes in swinging with an extinguisher knocking out two guys. Sergeant Turner then disposes of Michael, warning him to stay down. 
He tells Michael that even if he was right, one wrong move could screw everything up for the future and tells him to get back to his seat. In the cockpit, Daniel notes that their fuel is low and they should look for a place to land when Nigel radios back to them. He confirms that their ship was indeed sunken in the bombing and that they lost all their men at Dunkirk. Dale and Bennett confirm that from their knowledge, Dunkirk was a successful evacuation, leading them to believe that they are in an alternate past and not their own. The pilots are able to pinpoint their location and realize that they are nearing the German border. Nigel warns them to change their course, as they have picked up German chatter of a large aircraft over France. William and Daniel ask for help from Allied forces and turn on their navigational lights in order to be more visible. On the ground, a German operator has intercepted their chatter. In no time, the radar begins to pick up incoming aircraft, as German planes begin to close in on them. The Germans fly alongside the plane, so William decides to evade by turning off the lights and increasing his speed. The Jerrys begin to fire at the plane, peppering it with bullets while the passengers all scream in terror. William maneuvers his way through the hail of bullets and throws the plane into a nosedive, pulling up just before hitting the ground, taking out one German plane. As they ascend, another German plane fires at them, piercing the cockpit and hitting Daniel. Cameron plugs the hole to the cabin and they tend to Daniel's wound when William realizes that their landing gear is damaged. Not getting through to Nigel and without further options, they decide to fill the passengers in on what's happening, seeing if anyone on board can help. Nigel is reporting to his colonel, who wants him to get more information about their radar systems as it could help them with the war, but plans to blow the plane up if it should fall into German hands. William explains to the passengers the predicament they are in being stuck in the past. He wants to find a good place to land but needs help with the landing gear. One girl, Teresa, volunteers to help as she is an engineer and another man, Hector, also volunteers as he is a mechanic but speaks just a bit of English. The three head down below to the belly of the plane where Teresa realizes that they have some ripped wires. They are able to repair the wires and open the doors, but the landing gear is still stuck. Hector sees that a shrapnel is jamming the gears and decides to climb onto the wheel with his hammer and knock the shrapnel loose. The landing gear descends with Hector hanging for his dear life after slipping on the wheels, but he is able to pull himself back up to safety. They head back up and report the good news to the passengers who all applaud, but the celebration is cut short when William hears that they are soon out of fuel. They are finally able to get back in contact with Nigel, and tell him about the weather anomaly that brought them here and ask that Nigel look for anything similar around. Nigel in turn asks for any information on their radar systems as it would help. He tries to tell them about his superior's decision to shoot them down, but German fighters appear and begin shooting at the plane once more. The airplane is again peppered with bullets. The Germans fire a rocket but William maneuvers just in time and the blast blows out the windows. They see a German fighter coming directly for them but William dodges the head on attack causing the plane to crash into his allies. With Dale and Bennett also in the cockpit, they want to find a way to track enemy fighters and decide on giving Nigel their radar systems to help guide them from the ground. They realize that in this timeline, the Allied forces have not developed radar and think that's why they ended up here. They convince William to go along with the plan and he agrees, but a missile strikes one of the engines, causing the plane to quickly descend. Daniel is able to get the engine running and they are able to steady the plane. They get back in touch with Nigel and tell him about their plan to drop him their radar to help them navigate, and begin cutting the radar from the nose of the plane and gather supplies. On the ground, Nigel warns his colonel to call off the attack as the craft will hand over their radars to them. The crew and passengers are able to make a makeshift parachute and gather all the items into a bag. The plane descends and they are able to open the doors and throw the bag out, before spotting German planes after them. On the ground, German forces intercept the package but the Allied troops show up in time. After a gunfight, the Allied troops are able to recover the bag. William and Daniel are evading German fighters when a rocket hits the side of the plane, carrying a hole in the cabin and sucking one man off, I mean out. William struggles to steady the plane but another woman is pulled from the cabin before he can do so. The Allied troops bring the radar to Nigel who begins to scan the skies for the enemy. Nigel guides them through the German fighters, but one pilot is ready to fire on them. Out of nowhere, Allied fighters show up and begin blasting the Germans from the skies. Nigel is ready to guide them to a landing site, but William and Daniel see the same lightning storm appear before them. William radios back to the passengers, thanking them for their help before turning the plane into the portal. He also thanks Nigel for all his help and tells him goodbye before the plane disappears, reappearing back to blue skies. Their systems come back online and German airway control guides them to a runway as they are completely out of fuel. On the ground, emergency services gather, as the aircraft with a massive hole in its cabin lands safely on the ground. William then checks to confirm they are back in 2022. The passengers all disembark but the old man is still in the back finishing up his writing. William goes to speak with him and sees his notes about a radar system, then sees that his name is Nigel Sheffield before he also disembarks, leaving William with a confused look on his face. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications, so you can watch more movies like this. Thanks for watching.